to another edition of Cheers to Careers. I am Steve Ridinghouse, the Career Outreach Coordinator at the School of Journalism and Mass Communications at KU. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Cheers to Careers. I am Steve Ridinghouse, the Career Outreach Coordinator at the KU School of Journalism and Mass Communications. Today we are joined by Angel Tran, Marketing Coordinator at Populous. Welcome, Angel. Thank you. It's good to be here. I can't believe it. Has it been four years since you graduated? Does it seem that long? No, it doesn't, <laughs> actually. When you told me four years earlier, I had to check the math on that because <laughs> I wasn't quite sure, but it's true. And I know you've been at Populous a little more than a year. So what, what do you do for Populous as the marketing coordinator? Yes. So I'm marketing coordinator, too, and Populous. So just to give a little bit of a rundown on Populous, we're a global design firm. We specialize in architecture for sports facilities, so like think of arenas, stadiums, mm -hmm. um, but we also work in other markets as well too, such as aviation and hospitality and retail. And so for me, I'm one of the coordinators there under the marketing team, and my two markets are esports and brand activation. Okay. So for the coordinators, our focus is on winning work. So like if a request for a proposal comes in or request for qualifications. So we call that like RFP, RFQ. Mm -hmm. So we'll put together the package with um, the architects or designers, whoever we're working with. And then we'll submit that to the client and try to win the work. So that's how we get a lot of our projects. Um, I also work on a lot of strategic initiatives in my market. So like coordinating and organizing conferences, like um, you know speaking engagements, just also other now I'm trying to think of examples of what I do. It's right. hard when you're trying to think of it, but just like little tidbits of like um, like the holiday card or business development with clients. Okay. Just anything marketing-wise that I need help with, that's what I'm there for. Before you were at Populous, I know you spent some time at Par Electrical Contractors. Yes. Was that a pretty sm smooth transition from Par to Populous? Yes, it was actually. I'd say probably my transition from being a student to PAR was a bit more difficult, but from PAR to Populous, um, I, I felt prepared. I felt confident in my abilities at that point. Um, I was working in that industry, so there wasn't any concern there. I think it was more of like the sentimental attachment right. of my first job and you know, being there for almost three years and getting to know my coworkers and. I was comfortable there, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel like I was able to grow. So of course I was scared. Like what if I didn't like right. my new company? What if I didn't get along with my team? But of course those were unnecessary worries. And I know moments ago we were talking about you had a connection at Populous, Brianna Mears, another KU grad. Um, what kind of role did that play? Yes, so while I was at KU, and this is one of my favorite stories. So <laughs> while I was at KU working at the J School, Brianna Mears was, I believe, a grade below me, and we have definitely crossed paths. Mm -hmm. You know, she was involved on campus, I was involved on campus. So we knew each other, and we were connected on LinkedIn. And, you know, like, we graduated, some years had passed, and I saw that she was posting for an uh, open position for a marketing coordinator, Populous. And I had seen her post before. I'd looked into the company. It was really cool, just the work that they were doing. And so it felt like it came at the right time where I was trying to have a change in my career and move up a little bit. And so I applied for the job and I reached out to her, just a quick note on LinkedIn, like, hey, I don't know this is still available, but if it is, you know, just nice. look out for my application. And she looked at my profile. She's like, yes, you know, your qualifications fit. I'll let my boss know. And then soon after I got an interview and we were able to work together for a little bit um, on the marketing team. She's no longer there. However, I'm very grateful for the connection. No, that's great. I mean, that's something I always talk about in career and outreach. Um, make, make sure you take advantage of those KE connections. So no, I'm great. It worked out with Brianna. Um, and I know you came to KU, you're a transfer student because you're from Wichita, right? Yes. And you started school in Wichita? Yes. What, what brought you to KU? Yes, so <laughs> a lot of things. I'm from Wichita, I went to Wichita State for two years just to remain close to home mm -hmm. and you know, do the gen eds for the first couple of years. Uh, I always knew I wanted to transfer to KU really yeah. for the credibility and the reputation, I would say was the first thing. Um, and when I decided I want to pursue journalism, KU obviously has a really great yeah. journalism program. And I just want to preface by saying I love my time in Wichita State. Like that was valuable in its own way. And I made 
um, good connections there. But I knew that if I wanted to have more opportunities and really, um, how do I say this, really grow and flourish and all that. And plus, Lawrence is close to Topeka. Lawrence right. is close to KC. So there was just a lot more happening in the industry there for me. And so that's why I decided to transfer. And it also really pushed me out of my comfort zone. I wasn't too far from home, but I still had to learn how to right. take care of myself and really just chase my dreams up here. And what were those dreams? I mean, did you know exactly what you wanted to do when you were a student? Did you have any idea who you wanted to work for, the type of career you wanted, or were you pretty much open to anything? I would probably say I had a general idea, but I was also, I didn't want to, you know, silo myself mm -hmm. and limit myself. So originally when I was in college, I started off in dentistry oh, wow. because that's what, that's what my parents wanted. <laughs> they wanted, you know, a doctor or a lawyer or a dentist, which I understand. Um, but I have just always loved reading and writing and storytelling as a kid. That was my escape when I was younger. And so it, the, the pipeline just made sense to go into journalism and mass communications mm -hmm. and help people tell their stories and write a lot. So I guess my aspirations have always centered around storytelling and writing. But no, I didn't have an exact company in mind where I was like, yes, I wanted to go work at PAR, I wanted to go work at Populous. I was just kind of doing what I needed to do to you know, graduate, to have the experience, and whatever came my way, or whatever like, you know, I had my target on, then that's right. what I was going for. And speaking of writing, I know I was looking at your bio, and I'm familiar with a lot of your work as a student, but you took advantage of a lot of on-campus opportunities. I mean, I know you worked um, with Julie, here at the Chase School, um, did some writing for them. Um, I think you were a KU State House reporter for a while, Chalk Magazine, um, then Odyssey. So it seems like you really embraced trying to get as much writing experience as you can. Yes, and I think that had to do with the fact that because I transferred, so I, only, I knew I only had two years at KU, and I really wanted to take advantage. Um, I was like, I really need to rev up my engines because I felt like I was behind, you know, just staying back in Wichita. So when I got to campus, that was really my main focus was, okay, what are the opportunities available? What can I do to really build my portfolio? Um, really, you know, add to my stock value. And so I just went all in yeah. on a bunch yeah. of stuff. And it was great. It was busy, but it was a good time. And going back to Populous, I know um, you shared some great photos. And it looks like you coordinated a Lunar New Year festivities with your work. Yes. Are you part of um, like a diversity board? Is that was kind of the inspiration for that? Or they kind of challenge you to come up with an event? Or what was the kind of the story behind that? Yes. So when I joined Populous, last year I learned that we do have different um, like groups within Populous and one of them is called Pop Together okay. which is our diversity, inclusion, equity and belonging group and that's something I'd always really been passionate about especially you know as a minority and so I ended up joining the group and I noticed that so there was a lack of like programming for a lot of Asian holidays there just wasn't a lot of Asian American representation in the group, which is no one's fault. Right. It's, you know, it's a grassroots organization. It's volunteer basis. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go in <laughs> and I'm gonna fill this gap. And so over the past year, I've had the opportunity to host um, a few events. One was for a Mid-Autumn Festival. And most recently, as you oh. noted, was the Lunar New Year celebration. And that was probably the most rewarding aspect of my career. Uh, it's. They, Populous has just been so supportive, the leadership has been. They just kind of let me go with my ideas and they're like, okay, whatever you want to do, here are the resources and we'll let you do it. So I was able to give a presentation on the Lunar New Year um, and then also we had a nonprofit youth group, lion dance group. They came in and they performed a traditional lion dance for everyone. Oh, wow. And everyone, like I gave everyone a uh, red envelope so they could put lucky money to like Better, like feed feed the lion for like good luck and so that was just a really really cool thing and I've always had that vision in my head because we have a really neat grandstand area okay. with like the big windows in the back so and like the stairs I'm like I could see them performing here I could like hear the drums and the cymbals and so that was just a really rewarding experience 
Did you get any positive feedback from your coworkers? Yes, yes. I was definitely running on an adrenaline <laughs> high for a week because everyone just reached out and said it was great. And like, I didn't know that. I learned so much about this. Like, I've never had like exposure to you know the culture like this. So it was just. I keep saying it's rewarding because it is, and I just like that's what I'm really passionate about. So I'm glad that in addition to my work, I have this outlet to share mm -hmm. my interests and promote um, diversity and raise awareness for culture, so. Is there a good chance that's gonna come back next year? Yes, the actually <laughs> people have talked to me about making it a tradition because it would be like a good, right. um, you know, kind of superstition tradition to have the line dance come in and ring in the, the new year and bring prosperity and good luck and obviously um, for the company as well too, so yeah. And what was involved with the uh, Mid-Autumn Festival? So the Mid-Autumn Festival, that was the first uh, event I would hosted. So again, I had given a presentation at our town hall, you know, explained the, the history, where it came from, the symbolism. And then I coordinated with other, all the other offices in the US as well too. And so we all brought in moon cakes, uh, oh. which is like this like pretty decadent pastry that we only eat around Mid-Autumn Festival. So I bought a bunch of moon cakes, you know, I right. like set it up, I had signs and everything. And so after the presentation, people in the KC office were able to go and sample and try a little bit. And it was just a good time. And everyone, again, positive feedback. And I'm just grateful that they pretty much let me do whatever I want. So. <laughs> and you talk about diversity in the workplace. Um, I know that's that topic has gained a lot of momentum in recent years. Is that important to you? I mean, throughout your career? I mean, are you always going to look at an organization that really values that? Yes, for sure. It's just something, even as a student, I had been involved at KU with, you know, um, BSA, so Vietnamese Student Association, ASU, even at Wichita State, I was involved with those as well. And I'm, I'm in an Asian interest multicultural sorority. So that's just a piece of my identity that I will always carry through with um, okay. through my career. And I honestly didn't know Populous had a diversity group like that pop together. So it was just uh, an added perk, really, when I learned about it. And Populous is based out of Kansas City, but I know they're a global company. Do you have any opportunities to travel with Populous, or you, do you want to travel? Yes, <laughs> yes. So I have traveled. I went to a conference last year in Los Angeles, which was for stadiums, and it was a really cool. I think we were at, it was, I think it's called Sports Dignity Health. Park. It's okay. where LA Galaxy plays out. I forgot okay. the name of it, but that's where we had the conference, and they also had tours. Um, I wasn't able to make it, but they had a tour of SoFi Stadium, so maybe next time. I'm trying to go to it next year, but yes, so people on our team do have opportunities to travel. Like If there's a conference, they see a value, or if we want to go to a project opener where we just finished a project, and we want to go and experience that, or we want to visit like a construction site especially if it's a project that we help win, like the marketing coordinators, then they're pretty receptive and pretty open to letting us travel. Okay. I know you've talked a lot about your writing. What, what have been some of those transferable skills that you developed at KU that you've been able to carry to your job at Populous? Yes, so the skills at the J School, I would say, are pretty versatile and flexible. Um, I, for those who don't know, I started on the news and. An right. information track when it was called news information. I don't yep. know what it's called now. <laughs> uh, and then I'm obviously in a stratcom job now. But the skills really just stick with you the whole time. So, you know, writing, editing, just like effective communication skills in various forms, whether it's for like print, web, social media, right. or just verbally like learning how to communicate with people. And then, so I had a lot of deadlines when I was a J school student, and I still have a lot of deadlines sure. now that hasn't changed. So just being able to prioritize and um, you know, make sure you're on top of your work, meeting deadlines, and then also when I'm putting together responses for proposals or qualifications, there's almost kind of an interview aspect, not in the right. traditional journalism sense, but you're trying to get information right from the subject matter experts. So there's like still that element of interviewing in mm -hmm. a sense and getting information so you can put it into a con comprehensible package. And do you feel confident with your interview skills, I mean, regardless of what topic you're discussing or who you're talking to? Yes, I mm -hmm. do. It almost fe feels seamless now. I, I was probably nervous for my first few interviews when 
I was doing it as a student, but now it's like, it's just so natural, like mm -hmm. the research you need to do, how to prepare the questions, and ask effective questions in a way that makes sense, so. And I'm just, I'm not as, I guess, shy <laughs> anymore, or bashful, it's like, you know, I know what I need yep. to get from the person, and it's just, you know, having a conversation. Also, this is where, like, the communication skills comes in. It's not like, hey, I, like, I want to ask you a question. It's, you know, really connecting and talking with them and getting their story. Well, if my math's right, this year's seniors, some of them might have been freshmen when you were about to graduate, or some of them might not even started at KU. Any advice you would share, you know, with this outgoing class, I mean, as they enter the workforce and what they should be prepared for? Yes. I have so much advice, so <laughs> bear with me. I should have made a note of everything I wanted to say because, yes, I am not, I don't, so I have four years of experience, which it's not a lot compared to, you know, some of our right. alum. However, I think it's still valued, valuable just because it's, I'm still fresh mm -hmm. in a way, sort of. I don't know. I'm trying to sound young now, so. You're young. I don't You're know. young. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the first thing I would say is to just be confident in yourself and you know, recognize your value. And you know, as a KU student, as a student at the J School, you already have so much credibility from that, just from like the skills and the classes that you take here. So just be confident and don't sell yourself short and see your value. Um, and then on that note, I would also say put in the work too. Mm -hmm. Just because you're graduating w right. graduating with a degree and you're from KU, that's that's not where that ends. You should definitely take advantage of opportunities on campus. Um, go to all the events, like J School Generations, or last semester they had alumni takeover, or this week is William Allen White Week, mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. So there's just so many resources, so many things that you go to. Go to, go to Steve. I've gone to Steve so many times. No, you're like one of the first ones to come to my yes, office. Yes, I yeah. probably go to Steve periodically <laughs> when I was a student, and then the career fairs. So all of this is available to you. Just make sure you take advantage of it, like the tech, um, the tech, the J-Bar -bar, yep. trainings as well to you. So just really load up your arsenal and raise your stock value as well. And also just, you know, be curious, just learn. Like, yes, I just said do all this thing to mm -hmm. raise your stock value, but also want to better yourself as an individual and as a professional. And what else? I would say, Take care of yourself. Also have some self-care. It's a really stressful time going from, you know, a graduate to trying to find your profession. And I understand. But now looking back in hindsight, like, everything does work out. Just keep at it. Just be confident in who you are. Also take care of yourself. And try not to stress too much. Okay. No, I appreciate you taking the time to visit. Um, I know I'm in my eighth year here. So I was here, I think, when you arrived from three or four years. So, hey, I just want to say, Angel, thanks for being here, and uh, cheers to your career. Cheers. Thank you.